القرآن يوحدنا لطريق الخير يوجهنا الله تعالى أنزله ورسول الله معلمنا ورسول الله معلمنا أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في غرور Or who is it that could be an army for you to aid you other than the most merciful? The disbelievers are not but in delusion. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم And who is it that could be an army to aid you against Ar-Rahman, the most merciful? Now the people believe that this all the punishment of the hellfire and the punishment on earth, which was Yaqsif and Hasib, cannot come. They were powerful, they can handle it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first showed all of these things that he created them. Then he is taking care of them. Then he is running them. He controls them. فَوْقَهُمْ صَعْفَاتُ وَيَقْبِدْ Even the birds. And it's very ironic, subhanAllah, that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentioned bird here when he was mentioning the punishments of wind and earthquakes. Because there has been a punishment in the past which came through birds, as we know. One of them is the punishment that came on the person who came to destroy the Kaaba. And they were... Um, small tiny birds who threw stones at them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically trying to shake them that what make you believe there will be an army for you with you to aid you against Ar-Rahman because he controls all of this this is his army you cannot run away or escape if he decides again the purpose is to to basically warn and to shake us up so that we don't indulge in things that will cause his punishment. We don't indulge in actions that will cause his anger. And it says, Ar-Rahman, it's being taught, the punishment is being talked and the word comes, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. And my little mind can only think of one thing at the moment, that because he's telling us all of this, because he wants us to be saved from it, Hence, Ar-Rahman. إِنَّهُ إِنَ الْكَافِرُونَ إِلَّا فِي غُرُورِ Indeed, the disbelievers are in great delusion that they can run away or they can escape or nothing is going to happen. After all of these signs, still, if someone doesn't believe, then indeed it's nothing but غُرُور, a delusion. May Allah save us from being from those people. The next few ayat are some of the very powerful statements from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This section of ayat is asking, rather challenging the people, who is in your army? Do you have a jund, that is an army, who can battle with me, that is Allah? It is a question that these people are asked to contemplate. Is your army ready to face Allah? For example, your group of friends, are they the ones who would na'uzubillah, battle against Allah? Are they the ones who you rely upon instead of Allah? Allah Ta'ala talks about delusion, self-deception and hypocrisy. And these are all states of mind. And they have brought people into ghurur. Amman. Am is starting a new line of questioning. You know, it is a transition from one session to the other. Jund basically means a formal army. Jundul lakum, your army. You know, you are defying, you are rejecting all the things around you. The blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. So which army do you have? Waiting for you to help. Min dunir rahman. Now dun, it is also the opposite of fawq. So the opposite of fawq is tahta. Uh, which means below. And fawq means above. But dun is also... Uh, one of the opposites of fawq meaning lower so one of the meanings for dun will be that you know whatever plan you have 
apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is your, your plan B, it is lower, it is weaker, it is below Ar-Rahman. He is the best way to go. So min dun can also mean against someone. That is what some Mufassirun say that min when combined with dun, it actually comes like an opposition. And again, why Ar-Rahman is used? You know, the significance of Ar-Rahman, as we have talked about this earlier, this has been used four times in Surah Mulk. Although the tone of Surah Mulk is strong, but it is still trying to make you understand. Listen, look around at the blessings of Ar-Rahman, that is the abundantly merciful. And Ar-Rahman creates a sense of obligation, you know, to upon, uh, upon all of us. And it is an inviting, a welcoming word. In il kafiruna, in is here to negate. And kafirun, as we have talked about this earlier, it is the disbelievers, you know, the defiance. Illa, except for fi, is in, guru. It is basically when someone assumes, you know, they are deluded. When someone continues to deceive themselves and convince themselves and in reality, it is something which is bad. In Quran, in other places, you know, when Allah Ta'ala has given the example of this dunya, He has mentioned mata'ul ghurur, that is, it is a pure, sheer deception. al kafiruna And with the attachment of Alif Lam, it has become common to all, you know, who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is great, grateful and who persists in this denial. Sorry, the one who is ungrateful and who persists in this denial. And as we have talked about this earlier, because it's a noun, it shows continuity. You know, they are, they are consistently doing it. And fee is used to tell us that they are completely sum, submerged, encroached in their deception and once you persist in this ingratitude you build a false reality around you and you cannot see the light anymore just like allah ta'ala says in another place is an amna alal insan you know when i give them something good he says look what i have accomplished look what i have done with my own hands and it's actually a kind of delusion because the one who has sustained you along the way you know, the people, the things that were around you, who were there with you as a support, the parents, you know, your teachers, the resources, the materials you had, the opportunities, and everything was given to you by Allah. So don't be self-deluded. As the man in Surah Kahf, you know, he had two gardens full of fruits, vegetables, and he looked and said, قَالَ مَا أَزُنُّ أَن تَبِينَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا Meaning that I feel that this will never ever perish. The roots are deep. The water is clean. You know, these gardens of mine, nothing can destroy them. And then he woke up. How much he had toiled to get that garden? It had become desolate, wiped out. The spring, the river was gone. The soil had gone bad. And the roots had shriveled up. And at that moment, he understands that it's not me. He says, Ya laytani lam ushrik bi rabbi ahada. I wish I had never done shirk with Allah. He did not worship anybody else, but he worshipped himself. He took himself along with Allah. He did not attribute, you know, all the goodness, all the khair that he had to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was proud and pride blinds. Allah Ta'ala tells us that this ghurur is one of the things that turns the person away from the reality of Allah. In another place, Allah Ta'ala tells us, Allah." So if you are going to run, run to Allah. And ulama tell us that there is no other way. If you want to protect yourself from Allah, it is with Allah. If you want yourself to be safe from the punishment of Allah, you have to go to Allah. The one who will punish you, who might punish you, is the one who is the most merciful. Love.